artificial intelligence is becoming more prevalent online and is seemingly here to stay. I'm Lee Zurich. And I'm T. Chappelle. Today on Investigate TV Plus, the very real concerns when it comes to fabricated photos. We are going to have deceptive media and it's not always going to be able to be immediately deciphered. We reveal how lawmakers and industry leaders are crafting potential solutions and how you can be your own investigator when you come across questionable content. The fundamental idea is that people have a right to know if something is made by generative AI or if something was authentically made by, let's say, a camera. Plus, seniors losing their life savings to scams. Grandparents are the targets because, quite frankly, in this instance, um, you know, they have the money. We reveal how these grandparent scams are getting more sophisticated so you can spot the red flags. And a shudder of respect. How this veteran is honoring her sisters in service in-depth stories that inform and inspire. You're watching Investigate TV Plus. Artificial intelligence is growing and fast. Its rapid expansion is prompting questions about its potential impact on our lives. According to a 2023 survey from the Pew Research Center, 52% of Americans say they feel more concerned than excited about the use of AI in their daily lives. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill are also grappling with the technology's risks versus rewards and how to regulate it. Reporter Heather Graff shows you one recent example experts view as a warning sign of what's to come even as tech companies race to develop and implement potential safeguards. The Pentagon serves as headquarters for the Department of Defense and is considered a symbol of U.S. strength and security. So when this fake photo was shared on social media alongside claims it showed an explosion at the Pentagon the morning of May 22, 2023, it sparked some very real fear and even a dip in the stock markets. This is a first in my career. That's Captain Nate Heiner. He's a public information officer for the fire department in Arlington, Virginia, where the Pentagon is located. And as the image went viral, Heiner's phone started ringing. So what stood out to you about that photo? It looked nothing like the Pentagon. For somebody who's worked in the county for 13, 14 years, I knew that looks nothing like the Pentagon. But let me do my checks and balances. So I went on to my computer, pulled up all the active 911 calls for the county. Not a single call at the Pentagon. No medical calls, no fire, no explosions. Heiner also reached out to Pentagon officials and then quickly put out a tweet from the fire department's account writing, there is no explosion or incident taking place at or near the Pentagon and there is no immediate danger or hazards to the public. So we felt it was really important to try to cut it off as early as possible and reduce any kind of misinformation that may be out there. And while the exact source of that misinformation remains unknown, experts now say the fabricated image was likely made using artificial intelligence. My first thought was, this is just the start. It is a bit of a harbinger that we are going to see more and more of this. Mounier Ibrahim represents TruePic on the Coalition for Content Provenance and Authenticity, or C2PA. It's a group of companies that also includes Microsoft, Adobe, and Intel, all working together to try to address the prevalence of misleading images and AI-generated content online. The fundamental idea is that people have a right to know if something is made by generative AI or if something was authentically made by, let's say, a camera. To that end, the C2PA has developed tools and technical standards for verifying a file's origin. We're at the dawn of artificial intelligence. And to illustrate how the technology works, Trupic recently published this video. It deemed the first ever transparent deepfake. In the top right corner, you can see it stamped with a digital fingerprint and clearly identified as AI-generated content. The purpose of this was to show even with synthetic media, you can still be transparent. You can tag it and say this was created by AI. And is your hope that this would then be expanded or perhaps serve as a model? We want other organizations, browsers, social media platforms to adopt the standard, engage on it, learn about it. Why is that so important? Because to really scale transparency and authenticity in the digital content we see and hear online, 
it needs to be interoperable. And we do believe that this is going to be uh, the future. But Ibrahim cautions there is no simple fix amid rapid advancements in artificial intelligence. There is no panacea. There is no silver bullet. There is no magic code that erases all of this. We are going to have bad actors. We are going to have deceptive media, and it's not always going to be able to be immediately deciphered. This 2021 study out of Stanford University issued a similar warning. It looked at the most pressing dangers of AI, among them disinformation and threat to democracy. From deepfake videos to online bots manipulating public discourse, researchers said, quote, there is the danger of AI systems undermining social trust. Meanwhile, Congress is still in the early stages of discussion on AI regulation. Welcome to today's hearing entitled Artificial Intelligence, Advancing Innovation in the National Interest. At this hearing in June, experts stress the importance of what they call AI literacy throughout our society. We need comprehensive AI training for the general population. K-12 through curricula, certifications, there's a lot of good ideas there. And back at the Arlington Fire Department, Captain Heiner knows AI-generated images are now just one more thing first responders must prepare for. And it's just trying to stay informed about what's out there and just falling back to those basic checks and balances. In a lot of ways, he says, members of the public should do the same. I would say always have a questioning eye. As we've heard for years and years and years, don't believe everything you see on the internet. Manipulated photos have been around for years, but thanks to artificial intelligence, they're getting more realistic and even harder to detect. According to experts, one tip is to keep an eye out for slight visual anomalies, like in faces. You can pay attention to the cheeks and forehead. If the skin looks too smooth or wrinkly or moves unnaturally, that can be a telltale sign of AI-generated content. You can also try something called the SIFT technique, developed by digital literacy expert Mike Caulfield out of Washington State. SIFT is an acronym that reminds people to stop, investigate the source, find better coverage, and trace claims. SIFT wasn't designed specifically to help people spot AI-generated images, but experts say those four steps can be helpful in evaluating any content online. And finally, you can find out if that viral photo you saw on Facebook is real. Just head to investigatetv.com and type in reverse image search for a tutorial. You can even plug in your own photos to see if someone's been using them without your permission. Still ahead, growing optimism among people with a disease that causes hair loss. Within the first few days of taking it, I noticed a big change. The treatment giving some patients renewed hope. Plus, seniors losing more money to scams. Because usually a scam says potential scam or something like this, but it was actually somebody's name with a telephone number. How you can spot the signs, and we reveal how this grandma served one scammer a slice of humble pie. You can watch Investigate TV Plus anytime streaming online. Get the app for Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV. They're free to download. Hello? Scams targeting seniors are getting more sophisticated. And the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center says seniors are paying the price. From 2021 to 22, it found total losses by elderly victims increased 84%. And in 2022, the average scam victim over 60 lost more than $35,000. For many seniors, few things are as precious as their grandchildren. Scammers know this and experts say they use it to their advantage. Reporter Jen Pachano shows us how and why one scammer messed with the wrong grandma. Krista Willis got a call like many other senior citizens have been getting lately. Because usually a scam says potential scam or something like this, but it was actually somebody's name with a telephone number. Really? Was it a local number? Yes, it was a 216 local number. Willis was shocked at what the man on the other line said. He says, um, I'm the deputy somebody, and um, your grandson was in an accident. He's at fault, and he, he, you need to pay his bond for him to get out. He asked her to wire $5,000 immediately in order to keep her grandson, Eric, from being held in jail all weekend. So grandparents are the targets because 
quite frankly, in this instance, um, you know, they have the money. Susan Lacott with the FBI in Cleveland says criminals are now using a playbook of tactics and tools after they connect via text or a phone call with a sympathetic grandparent who's compelled to help when they think their loved one is in trouble. Well, maybe they're arrested, maybe they've been in an accident or perhaps stranded on the side of the road mm -hmm. and need money, and they need money now. And that's when the scam starts. Lacott says the scammers are even roping in rideshare drivers like Uber into these crimes, sending them to victims' homes to collect the cash or asking for the money to be wired, all while pressuring the grandparents with a sense of urgency. Almost like, how can you live with yourself not giving me the money because your grandchild is going to be in jail for the weekend if you don't give me the money. That's just terrible. But in Willis's case, this scammer was going after the wrong grandma. And I'm like thinking to myself in the back of my head, <laughs> this is going to be really cute because I know for sure my grandson is upstairs, but I'm going to go with this. Knowing her 20-year-old grandson wasn't in Iraq or in jail, Willis was not going to fall for this, not only because she knew he was home, but because she's also a member of the Cuyahoga County Scam Squad. She kept him on the phone, trying to pry some information out of him. I need to know your name so I can call you back. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, you don't need to know that information. He also didn't specify which sheriff's department he was allegedly calling from. Lacott says Willis did the right thing by asking questions before acting and not giving up the requested funds right away. That first call that you make should be to the person who is purported to be in trouble to verify if they are in fact stranded on the side of the road, in the hospital, in jail, or have been detained or arrested or whatnot. Willis didn't stop at trying to extract information from the scammer. She laid into him. And then he started like panicking and he was like, this is my job and I didn't mean, I was like, this is your job? Scamming people? This is how you talk about you want to feed your family? I just, you know, and then I just went off on him. The tongue lashing went on for about 10 minutes, she said. You're approaching seniors that's frail to get money. How is that okay? And he was like, well, you just don't understand. It's hard out here. And it's like, really? I'm like, he gave you a sob story? Oh, yeah. oh, absolutely. In the absence of an over the phone scolding like Willis was able to pull off, Lacotte says reporting it and quickly is very important and could actually help get you your money back if you do end up wiring money to fraudsters. If it is reported to IC3.gov within three days, there's about an 80% chance of us to recover most of those funds for the victim. Lacotte says even if it's beyond the three day window or you're embarrassed because you've handed over cash to a rideshare driver, it's important to step up and file a report. It helps the FBI connect the dots all across the country because it's important to know that these criminal actors, they're usually not working alone. This is a criminal network. I'm just thinking in the back of my head, how many seniors fall for this and just give up their life savings for something like this? And they're just trying to help their grandchild. According to the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center, almost 400 seniors fell victim to the grandparent scam in 2022. They lost a total of $3.8 million. In addition to reporting to the FBI, the Department of Justice offers an elder abuse resource roadmap that includes resources for seniors if they think they've been the target of a scam or fraud. Head to justice.gov slash elder justice and click on financial exploitation then Federal Resource Roadmap. Still ahead on Investigate TV Plus, portraits of patriots who sometimes go unnoticed. They'll say thank you to your husband it's for serving. And I kind of get mad and I said, look, I'm the one that served. I said, my ID card, you know, here's my ID card. How this veteran is honoring fellow women who serve. Plus, millions of Americans live with a disease that causes hair loss. When I was 37, I developed another spot and I ended up losing all my hair. How this woman is helping other alopecia patients regain their confidence. Our in-depth coverage continues. You can get connected to Investigate TV Plus on all social media platforms. Alopecia areata is an autoimmune skin disease that affects 6.7 million Americans. That's according to the National Alopecia Areata Foundation, which says it most notably causes hair loss, sometimes as early as childhood. 
According to the American Academy of Dermatology, for patients with patchy hair loss, one of the most effective treatments is painful steroid injections into the scalp. But in June 2022, the FDA approved the first ever systemic treatment for alopecia, meaning it treats the entire body rather than a specific location. Reporter Terry Russell shows us how it works and why it's already showing promising results. Hetty Schuchert says about two years ago she started losing her hair. It started in the back. Um, back here so it could cover it up and then it started going through the sides and then the last part was right here on the top. Diagnosed with alopecia areata, an autoimmune disease, she received shots in her scalp designed to bring down the inflammation. The results were negligible, she says. But during one visit, her dermatologist told Hetty she was waiting for FDA approval of a drug that could make all the difference for Hetty. Within the first few days of taking it, I noticed a big change. This is the drug called Illumiant. It was introduced in 2018 for rheumatoid arthritis. Soon researchers discovered it was also helping alopecia patients with hair growth. Definitely more than half of the people get some sort of response. Some people gained all their hair back in the studies. So you don't know how that individual is going to play out until you try the medication on them. Researchers don't know exactly how Illumiant works. It's suspected it disrupts the immune response, which causes alopecia. Dr. Lamerson says this is the first new drug for alopecia patients who until now have had few options. She says for an otherwise healthy patient with alopecia, Illumiant is something to consider. It's important to note Dr. Lamerson says the drug only treats alopecia patients. It does not treat hair loss associated with age or hormone imbalance. The FDA only approved Illumiant to treat alopecia in patients 18 and older. A woman with alopecia areata in South Carolina reclaimed her confidence with wigs. Now she's helping others to do the same. 99.8% of my wigs are customized. So we're either thinning them or we're doing some bangs, we're taking out some weight, we're custom coloring of many of the wigs. Shannon Glasgow started losing her hair at the age of 19. By 37, she was bald and turned to wigs. I became very depressed. Um, I did not leave my house for over a year. I was sorry, I don't want to cry, but it was difficult. That's when she founded Wigged Out Women, a private, by appointment only, medical hair loss wig salon. It just has helped me. Walking other people through it has helped me greatly. So in 10th grade, I almost lost all of my hair. Um, <laughs> sorry. That was really difficult at that age, being in high school and um, having to deal with like explaining why you don't have hair or why where is your hair is go where your hair is going. Wigged Out Women offers free consultations and accepts some insurance. Still ahead on Investigate TV Plus, a snapshot salute. This veteran's mission to frame the brave faces of women who serve. We raised our right hand just like our brothers did, and um, we're here, you know. Um, we're not looking for praise or accolades, nothing like that. We just want people to know that we're here. You can watch Investigate TV Plus anytime online. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel at Investigate TV. You can catch stories and full episodes. According to the Department of Veterans Affairs, more than 2 million women veterans live in the U.S. today. One of them is on a new mission to honor her fellow former service women. Reporter Brittany Crittenton shows us how. I'm going to have you stand just like this. You're going to be facing the Sarah line. Sarah Weedy to is trying to help show these veterans the honor they deserve. One photo at a time. They signed the check that was blank, payable to the amount of their lives. We knew that there was a risk associated with it. Do you miss the Navy? Nope. An Air Force pilot herself, Weedy volunteered to start the tribute project after hearing stories like this. Tapped her like on the shoulder and was like, hey, uh, you should be ashamed of yourself. She's like, why? He's like, you're wearing your husband's jacket. That is stolen valor. You're actually the second SK Unfortunately, that Unfortunately, sailor Patricia Roberts has had similar experiences. They'll say, 
thank you to your husband for serving. And I kind of get mad, and I said, look, I'm the one that served. I said, my ID card, you know, here's my ID card. There's some that don't smile, there's some that do. The whole purpose of the photo shoot was just to kind of let people know, hey, there are female veterans in the community. We raised our right hand, just like our brothers did, and um, we're here, you know. Um, we're not looking for praise or accolades, nothing like that. We just want people to know that we're here. Donna Sargent served in nuclear medicine in the Air Force in the 70s. She says there used to be limited career fields for women in the military. You know, now we've got girls that fly fighter planes. So, I mean, there's just no career field not open to women anymore. And I think that's great. Weedy's tribute to women veterans has been gaining attention. She's taken photos in cities from El Paso to Big Spring. We just wanted them to know that the women are out here and serving just like the men are, on the ships, out in combat, the whole nine yards. We want to show you some of the results of Sarah's work honoring our mothers, sisters, and daughters who serve. Sarah posted all of the portraits on her Facebook page. Just search West Texas Female Veterans Photo Tribute. And I think this is such a wonderful thing so everyone will know the work that they put in and how they served our country as well as men. Men there, women there, as they said, and they yeah. had a very important parts in protecting us and keeping us safe. Absolutely. All right, that's it for us here on Investigate TV Plus. I'm Lee Zurich. And I'm Tisha Powell. Thanks for watching. Next time on Investigate TV Plus, skill games that look like slot machines are popping up in gas stations across the country. It's like putting a buffet full of desserts at an Overeaters Anonymous meeting. We investigate the legal gray area some say leaves gambling addicts paying the price when the machines are everywhere they turn.